Feels like it's been a minute since the last time I complained about Ready or Not, so I thought that I would, you know, complain about Ready or Not. And no, this is not going to be a video just about how I think the flashlights seriously need to be updated or how I really dislike that there is no rail for the G36C because I think it looks really awkward. No, I'm actually putting a little more thought and effort into this one. And to be clear, this isn't something that's new. It's actually something that's been talked about somewhat on the Reddit, maybe even a little bit in the Discord. But I'm just going to bring this to the forefront and make it the point of this video because it is something that I feel like Ready or Not is just missing the mark on. But to be fair, it seems like they are actually looking more into it, especially with this recent update. But I didn't really feel that it was missing until I actually saw that they removed something in one of their updates. It was something that felt really insignificant to me until they actually removed it. And that was the audio that was featured during the loading screen of Hotel. If anybody remembers, it was that uh, briefing audio that would always play, but we never actually heard the whole thing. Well, thanks to data miners, we are actually able to hear the full version without it being cut off or it being muffled with that radio effect. So I'm just going to play it for you. All right, folks, we're pressed on time here. We've got multiple reports of an escalated conflict occurring at the Wonderly Hills Hotel. Now, early reports are suggesting that this is related to an ongoing turf war. It's caused a few headaches for us in the recent weeks between the biker gang known as the Rebels Rejects and the Los Locos del Pacifico. Both gangs began arriving in tandem at approximately 1700 and have spread throughout the hotel in what is believed to be a disagreement involving the possible exchange of narcotics. There is reason to believe that the leaders of both parties are directly involved in this exchange, as seniority were reportedly spotted gathering at the bar, making their way upstairs at 1720. If these reports are correct, this does mean the presence of Johnny Axel Ramon, leader of the Rebels Rejects. More pressing, however, is that Ramon's fling just happens to be Belle Brady, daughter of Senator Brady, and she's more than likely going to be with him. As you can imagine, there will be ramifications for any actions deemed excessive. Shots were reportedly fired at 1740, with a ripple effect of conflict between the gangs across the hotel, leading to a call from the hotel bar manager. Folks, I know you're familiar with Ramon and his big talk on social media, but I must stress that the rejects are completely out of their depth here. The Los Locos have a ruthless streak, amplified by both time and an ever-increasing membership. Their leader, El Trori, and his lieutenants they're not going to be interested in taking prisoners. Your primary objective here is first and foremost to ensure the safety of the hotel staff and patrons. We don't have any confirmation of survivors just yet, but we do have word that there are numbers still populating the building, and they may well be in the middle of this crossfire. That does include Brady, regardless of her relationship with the rejects. Next priority is to secure and detain. We need this conflict de-escalated, and those gangs disarmed and dismantled. History suggests that these Los Locos won't hesitate to take hostages if need be, so use extreme caution. And if you get the chance, any evidence of what exactly is going down here may help us in wiping these gangs off our priority list entirely. Best get to it. Man, you don't know what you got until it's gone, huh? So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Ready or Not just has a severe lack of a planning and briefing phase. And given the way that they do their missions now, I don't know how they're actually going to implement one or if they're going to implement one at all. But that's not to say that they didn't have one in mind, as you can see from this audio file, and the fact that at one point in time, their website used to feature how they were actually going to go about a planning system. And reading through it, I remember it being like really in depth. I'm just trying to remember everything off the top of my head, but if I remember correctly, I think I think they said that there was going to be like a map where you can actually draw and show what you're gonna do there was gonna be like full-on descriptions of the area and even audio logs you were gonna be able to pick places where you could actually drop and have two different teams i don't know how it's gonna be now because they cut down the players from 10 to 5 and a lot of the maps used to be a lot bigger than what they were so i think that they're gonna stick with the 5 and not go back up to 10 they're accommodating for the 5 players and not the 10 and at this point in time anytime that you click on a mission you always spawn in one spot you never get to choose where you're at or get to go i remember them saying that there was going Going to be a point system where anytime that you completed a mission depending on the grade that you got you would get a specific amount of points and what you would use those points for is a bunch of like things that would help you for the next mission like um you'd use points to buy a negotiator that would reduce the amount of civilians that are in the level or buy a dog that would sniff out where the bomb is and put it on your map i think there was one where you could call the city and turn off lights that are inside the building so you can make it a night op those are just a couple of things that i could remember but i thought that they were really cool ideas 
ideas. I think they also said that the maps that were going to be featured in the point system were just like very basic maps, like a pamphlet from the front desk that just so happened to have like a goofy map on it or a notepad of a poorly drawn map of what they think that the map actually is going to be like or a map that's drawn on like toilet paper or something. But if you had the points, you could actually buy a better map of the exact location and plan it out accordingly. But again, given the way that the missions are structured and ready or not, where you just kind of like click on them, spawn in a specific spot every time, it's kind of hard to do a planning phase, especially when the co-op mission kind of spoils it for you already. You already know that it's going to be a bomb mission when you click on the bomb mission that's clearly labeled. And again, you spawn in the same spot every time that you click on it. The only thing that's really different is just where the enemies spawn. That's why I feel so spoiled by SWAT 4. Not to say that it had a planning phase, but it did have a really good briefing phase. A lot of the missions in swap 4 would always give you like a description of what people saw and not what the mission's actually about it always kept like a bit of a mystery to it read it out loud loud and clear why so i so i can do a, a, a one of those moments where i zoom in with the camera and shit <sighs> fine OCCB, the Organized Crime Control Bureau, has a job for us. They've been pursuing a flow of illegal arms into the city for about a year now, and they've got something solid to move on. Our suspect is Hadeon Koshika? What? Oh, a Ukrainian citizen. I probably really botched that like really the descriptions were only good for wanting to know what to bring like should i go heavy or should i go light like, there's a couple of guys with a couple of shotguns with not too much heavy armor so i'll probably go light or those guys with freaking heavy armor and ak-47s i'm gonna have to go heavy and pretty much every mission made it so that you could actually spawn in one or two different places depending on which team you were on blue team usually comes in from the front and red team usually comes in from the back Great, join team blue no no Okay, fine. Oh yeah. my god, are you for real, Dre? He's on the second floor already. In the career mode, they just give you two spots to spawn in with four other AI. And you could actually move around the outskirts of the map to find different insertions. Another thing that I really like about the career mode is that it actually has people reading off those briefings. A local dealer and a group of unidentified men. It quickly escalated into violence when Arius offsiders drew their guns. It even provides a phone call that happened between the operator and the person that called. 911 emergency 107, hello. A bunch of smackheads are shooting up my place, you gotta help me! Alright sir, what's your address? 1401 Gower, the arcade. Now obviously the briefing room in SWAT 4 doesn't give you every piece of information, they just try to give you the gist of what's going on or what's probably going to happen in those missions. But it's by far and away better than anything that Ready or Not has in the game right now in terms of a briefing or planning phase. Like literally, they could just add something that's like this but just make it so that you can actually interact with the map that's there because any of the maps that's in SWAT 4 are kind of just like a gimmick. Like you got like this map that's right here and you can't really interact with it aside from just like look at it. But man, if they could just add this briefing phase along with the planning part where you can draw on the map and add those points in there it would make ready or not a lot more interesting than it already is i mean the game is still pretty early in development so i mean who's to say that they won't have it in the future but if they do decide to go through with it i just feel like they would have to change a lot of things but what are your thoughts do you even think ready or not should have a planning or briefing phase with the point system or maybe something different or do you think that they should maybe just stay the course that they already have the way that they have it now let me know down below because i think i'm gonna end the video here if you like the video then give me a like if you fucking hated the video then and give me a dislike subscribe if you're new and ding that bell support the channel on patreon or click on the join button underneath the video and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye